got nothing between pin 3 and the uh, positive because this is a fake chip and on this one we can see we've got approximately 100k via the pull-up resistor that's supposed to be in there because this is a real chip that's what they look like side to side fake on the right real on the left how do I get both the knobs reversed <laughs> yep. that's the wrong way Yep, frequency. Yep. Yep. That's the wrong way. So yeah, pretty shitty, you know, but at the same time, this is an SC SSTC. I would imagine if I was to use an interrupter like that on my uh, other half bridge circuit, uh, basically, which would be the same coil, it would probably look like that. You're just not getting that, that umph. So it's kind of a, a uh, fun little setup like that, just, you know, without having the uh, tank caps and really a pretty fairly low DC bus capacitance going on there. You know, what pisses me off is this is basically just a regular SSTC that's got a uh, series cap on the primary for no reason, basically. So if I put it at about 100, let's see, that's about 140. Damn thing fell over.
It's starting to get a little warm. The thing about that is that's that doesn't look like a DRSSTC, really. That that's what an SST looks like when you crank the interrupter frequency up a whole lot. <laughs> the one important thing that I want to note here is while I think I have a problem going on with this flip flop here, what it is doing is allowing me to switch at this interrupter frequency to pull uh, breakouts like that. It's something to what I'm cranking close to 50% duty cycle. Um, I don't think in the end that's what the gate drivers end up seeing, but it's something close to it. Now, if I try to do that from any of my other coils, uh, when I start getting up in that frequency, it's it's really working those fits super duper hard. Um, now I can get... I can get up high enough to where it sort of looks like that speed, but it's no, you know, if you start getting up into like uh, 100 hertz, something like that, it looks pretty fast. But when you start getting up into maybe 500 hertz or close to a kilohertz, it's like a whole nother ball game, at least from my experience. That's that's when you start working those fits real hard. So I really wouldn't be able to get away with that in my other half bridge, uh, you know, with a heat sink of this size without those fits pretty much just overheating way too quickly and it would pull way more power than this because again this is off this little inverter through a, a drill battery um, so I guess that's the benefit where the way this is switching I can get away with uh, you know over 500 kilohertz uh, over 500 BPS uh, without really stressing it and I can pull those type of high frequency arcs uh, high frequency interrupted arcs but at the same time, like I say, I don't think I'm I'm really pushing the beef because of the flip flop. Maybe it's other variables, but I'm not think I'm pushing the beef to where I would really be able to get uh, what I should be able to get out of you know some small film caps and a, a, a fairly small uh, DC bus. It's just not quite what it could be. So that's why I say, even though I've got sort of a janky uh, little MMC on there with random caps, I found. That's not that's not performing right. Um, so again, this is why really doing this with a legit oscilloscope is probably the way to go. With the uh, lower BPS, and um, I'm just gonna cut it up. It's it's really you know again, it's not that impressive. Uh, I guess it's just the way I've got it tuned. <laughs> 